Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Neil and today we are going to work on a parallax title sequence in After Effects. So I've broken it down into um, chapters here and so first let's take a look at uh, what we are going to be playing with here. So you can see we have uh, regular video footage sped up, brought into uh, After Effects 3D space, and uh, we have some titles in there, and we go back to our uh, sped up video again. All right, so we will do that. We'll set up our video in After Effects. We will then export a layer and take it into Photoshop and separate those layers, the foreground and background. Then we will bring it back into After Effects and set up our 3D environment. We'll animate some titles. And then of course, the most important part, we'll finalize the image. All right, so chapter one. First of all, set up our video. So we need to create a new comp. Once we import our footage, we bring it into a comp rename and save that After Effects file. Uh, you can work on re re time remapping if you want. Uh, that's a sort of a little bonus here. And then we are going to export the frame. So what we're basically going to look for is the a nice frame to export into Photoshop. All right, so we'll take it into After Effects. So I've imported my footage. I'm going to click and drag that down to the new comp button. and. Um, you can see how it basically starts with uh, me looking to make sure the GoPro was on. And then uh, our character walks up and that's about it. Nice and quick. All right. So first things first, we're going to rename this uh, Comp, Control or Command K to come up with composition settings. Wooderson Portaging, we'll just call it Wooderson Main. Keep the duration where it is, we'll, uh, we'll export that or we'll uh, shrink it down in a minute. And save our file. So, Parallax Title Cutout, Wooderson Volume, whatever volume it is, four version I mean version 4 all right here we go so I got my guy and he walks straight by me and we got a beautiful little spot now I could do right here where he's kind of smiling a bit and we get a better uh, picture of his face but since I know that I'm gonna be cutting him out I'm actually gonna be worried about uh, the background here and so I want to put him in an area that's a little more uh, abstract, let's say, a little less detail, something I can hide easily. So we'll bring them up to here and we will enable our time remapping. We can right click or you can find that shortcut, time, enable time remap, control, alt, T. All right, so I've got it on the that nice frame. So I'm just going to come over here, click to add another keyframe. And now what I'm gonna do is predict how long I want my titles to be on. And because this is version four, I've worked it out to about two seconds. So I'm at 6.05, I'm gonna go to 8.05. And what I'm gonna do actually is, in order to keep the timing uh, linear, I actually want to go over here and select both of these keyframes. And what that'll do is if I command C, command V, or control C, control V, or if I go up to the top, copy paste, what that will do is, if I slide this over, you'll see now, this was the old one, the old finishing one, but now I've pushed both of these back, so I don't need this one anymore. I can just extend that out 
And what basically that means is that I have a perfectly still frame for exactly two seconds. And then we pop back into regular speed. Now, if I wanted to speed that up, which of course I do, very easily just bring this guy in. And even at the beginning too, we can speed that up. Now, to uh, condense my work area, I hit B wherever my um, wherever my timeline indicator is, and N on that side. Hit O or zero, sorry, zero on your keyboard. Oh, and you can see I'm still looking at it here. So I'm just going to push my. Yeah, look at that guy. Oh, don't look at the camera, man. So zero on your number pad means that it will um, render every frame into RAM. If you hit your space bar, you can also um, come over here to the uh, to the preview settings, and you can load it up, make it make it skip frames. The other um, time saving device, and when you're RAM previewing, is to bring down your uh, resolution settings. Uh, this is on full. It doesn't need to be. I know what the footage looks like. So I could take that down, right down to a quarter or even more uh, if I wanted to. So we'll just do that for now. All right, so there's our two seconds. Pretty boring without the extra bells and whistles we're gonna put on. And it goes too long and it's still too slow. So I'm gonna bring this way up, bring this way up. And we'll leave it there, and we'll tweak uh, we'll tweak it a little more if we need to. Maybe we don't even need it to go that far. There we go. All right. So now that I have my work area and the length of my um, final footage set up, now we can just right here in this blue area, right click and go trim comp to work area. And then we know exactly how long this is. If we go Control or Command K again, we can see this is not very long at all. And so it starts at 427. So that's a mistake. So we should, or not a mistake, but that's not the setting we want. We want it to our time code to start at zero or one. And then we know exactly how far or how long the sequence is. Four seconds, 21, four seconds, 21 frames. All right, so we've got our frame. I'm gonna click save. And now I want to export this frame, making sure best settings are selected. So I'm gonna come up to the top, composition, save frame as, you can go uh, file or Photoshop layers. If you go file, it'll just default to where you want. If you go Photoshop, it'll default to saving uh, at the location. You'll have to set that up later. Uh, you can also choose your um, the file types you want. Right now, I'm going to keep it as Photoshop layers. It'll ask me where I want it to be. Call it whatever you need it to be. Click Save. All right, so it's pretty much done. It's that quickly. It's that quick. Let's go over to Photoshop and cut it out. So, chapter two, we're gonna create our layers. We're gonna open, organize, and rename the file if we need to. We're gonna separate the foreground and background out elements. <clears throat> so, open. Find out where that file is. Wooderson, Maine. Okay, so. This is one of the things we need to be weary of when we are doing our exporting to files. Because I went from save frame as Photoshop layers, it takes 
the current settings. And my current settings are at a third. So if I go back over to Photoshop, you'll see my image size is 640 by 360. So that is not acceptable. So I'd have to go back over to After Effects, change this to full, composition, save frame as Photoshop layers, just save over that file. Now when I go to Photoshop, just close that up. And do it again. You'll notice it's much bigger. Image, image size. Now it's actually 1920 by 1080. Okay, so like I said, make sure, I'll go back one, make sure best settings are selected. All right. Or you're on full resolution. Okay, so we have our Witterson Portaging MP4. Don't need it to be called that. Witterson Portaging. Just call it uh, Witterson Cutout. Because we're going to rename it again after that. And basically, what I want to do is cut my foreground character out. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit here. And our best option at this stage is the quick selection tool right up here in the top level there. And the great thing about this is that it defaults to adding. You can actually have it on regular, but you don't need to. And just click and drag, and it does an incredible job of selecting the bits you want for the most part. When it gets down here, it starts to not really understand it all that well. But however, just hold down Alt and get that minus sign and delete it out. And just click and drag, tell Photoshop the parts you want. Resize your brush with the square brackets and it, for something like this that you know is pretty straight it's always better to get a or a, more accurate to get a uh, either use the pen tool or uh, the magnetic lasso tool or Where are we here? Lasso, polygonal lasso would probably work pretty good. However, for these purposes, I'll just keep painting. Who needs rulers? Since we're just doing this little demo. And these little bits now, this is up to you as far as what you want to include. It, of course, always depends on um, the production quality you're going for, right? Um, and how fast your animation is, if you're going to hide parts of these things or not. If you want to animate these little bits, which would add a lot of uh, character to your to your sequence. And then you can start to see how it when there's a lot of blurring going on, it has a harder time and just sort of make your way around, make sure we're getting the bits we want and not the bits we don't. There's some great tutorials out there on selecting and how best to do that. This quick selection tool is 
pretty excellent for the most part. And he's got his fishing rod up here. Now you can see I've selected this entire space, which doesn't do us much good. You can also see how choppy it is, and we'll see that more in a second when we get to uh, the Refine Mask tool. So we're doing pretty good here. Bring that up a bit. Give me a bit more of a nose a schnaz. My friend Sean won't mind. No, his name is not Witterson. Or maybe I'm outing him as a non Wooderson guy. Uh-oh. He's going to hate me for that one. I don't think he has a hateful bone in his body. All right, so <clears throat> we have a pretty good mask, or a pretty good selection, I should say. And what we want to do now is make sure that we have a even better selection. And the way we do that is with one of our selection tools selected, we go up to select and mask. And this is where we're going to get uh, a nicer um, mask, a nicer selection for our mask. So mine has defaulted to going to overlay, but um, yours might be on marching ants or on black or white or black and white or on the layer beneath it, which we don't have one. So I like to go to black and white just because I can see right away the sort of big mistakes. Go get my lasso tool over on here and delete those nice and quickly. So here's where underneath our main quick selection tool is a refine edge brush tool. If you have any kind of hairs or um, um, soft edges, that's what that is amazing for. However, for me, I'm just going to stick to uh, smoothing out and feathering just a little bit, maybe just a little hair. And then I'm going to shift that edge in ever so slightly, just so when I cut him out, I'm not actually including any of the background, or less of anyway. Mostly, though, it's the, uh, the smooth here. So if I go black and white, You'll be able to see nicely. Can zoom right in there. So here's smooth at nothing. And then you can see all the way up to 100. Beautiful, nice globules. Obviously way too much. So just a little hint, just to straighten those out. And click OK. Now it goes back to our regular screen. And for our purposes, we can, uh, first of all, make a copy because we want to have two layers, foreground and background. So I'm going to grab uh, this main layer, click and drag it down to the bottom, and you'll see the new layer button. So now we have two. I'm going to rename this layer uh, FG and this one BG. I select this foreground layer. I'm going to inverse and just hit the delete key. Now if I turn off that BG layer you'll see that I have a nice, well mostly nice cutout of our character and now I can go in and uh, make, you know, clean this up a bit, get my eraser tool. For the record, we are working destructively in Photoshop. There are ways to use layer masks. However, for this, for our purposes here, I'm going to uh, keep it very simple and uh, get straight to the point where we just have a foreground and our background separated and nice and neat and tidy for the most part. Obviously on a production 
these would be expertly cut out. All right, so we've got a pretty good cutout here. And I think we're good. All right, save that. Now, to get that selection back, I'm gonna go over to our foreground layer thumbnail. I'm gonna hold down Control or Command, and you'll see my uh, cursor changes. Click on that, and I get my perfect selection back, okay? It'll basically select anything that's opaque uh, or even semi-opaque. Okay, but what I wanna do is actually turn this layer off, go to my background layer, and I'm gonna fill this in. So this is where the magic happens. So first things first, check my check what I need to do. Create layers, separate foreground and background. So I've selected him, I've made a copy, and for this, for the background, I'm going to expand and feather selection, all right? So, first things first, I have that selection on my background. I'm gonna go up to Select, Modify, Expand, and it says Expand Selection. And I know just by having done this a couple times that uh, 25 pixels seems to be pretty good. Uh, it will always be different depending on the size of your frame. So this is a 19 by 20 by 1080, 25 pixels seems to be good enough. And you'll see how my selection expands. The next step is to go select, modify, feather. And on this one, I'm gonna feather it just slightly less than I've expanded it. So I could go to 20, but I'll keep it at 15 and we'll see how that works. And here is the most mind blowing thing about Photoshop. Go up to edit, fill. And what we wanna do is change the contents to content aware. So this is where if you were had a selection and for usually you would have, uh, you'd be um, adding in colors or whatnot, but we are going to mess with our brains and click content aware, click okay. And Photoshop will think and think and think and think and think. And then guess what? He's gone. At this stage I can deselect and <clears throat> now I can further refine my, uh, my background. Now, of course, this could do, it depends on what kind of animation you expect to do in your After Effects uh, file. For our purposes, just to show you what it's all about, I'm going to go up to our clone tool, because right now it kind of looks like um, the Predator's cloaking device. Uh, so I'm going to take that clone tool, get a nice big brush, hold down Alt or Option to get my target, click it once, and then you can see how we have an overlay, and you can just start to start adding in there. Um, you could go on opacity as less, um, however, that starts to look a little blurry. Take another and just sort of get some pixels from nearby and copy them over. Now, if you start to see it where we have um, a sort of copied look, it starts to look really bad, right? However, get our clone tool and go up to Window and Clone Source. You get this dialog box specifically for this clone tool. And what you can do is actually flip our um, axes. So this is our X axes, we can flip it. You can actually increase the sizing too. Um, you can do all kinds of stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna flip it and you can see 
it still has that old selection in there. So I can maybe take a new selection over here, click it over there, and now we start to see how you can really um, build on this without it looking overly strange. All right. Don't want to do that too much. I can even change the angle. Love this still. Just amazing what it can do, really. So that's good enough for now. I know that my, uh, because of all the effects that I'm going to be putting on here, uh, it's not entirely necessary to make this um, photo perfect. So we have our background, we have our foreground, and we're good to go. Hit save, and then we will go on to chapter three. All right, so we're going to import that photo or that Photoshop file as a comp. All right, go over to After Effects, and to import, you can go up to uh, File Import, or even easier, just within your project window, double click, and you'll see our file. If you go on Date Modified, you'll see the latest thing, and and before you click OK or import, we want to make sure we select as composition, not as a, as a footage. All right, so we click import, and then it'll give you these options. If you had layer styles going in Photoshop, whether you want to still have them or bake them into the footage, this just increases or decreases the size. We don't have any layer styles, so we're good there. Composition. And we're good. Now, if I double click, I open this up, you'll see I have my foreground and background, and we're ready to go. So, this actually does not need to be the entire size of, uh, of our comp, right? We only need the two seconds in here. So I can reduce this down, just Control-K, two seconds and click OK. Now my Wooderson main 2 is two seconds. I'm actually going to change the name uh, to um, cut out just so I can keep it clear in my head. Go back to our main and I'm going to bring that Wooderson cutout and put it right right on top here and if I hold or I click the left square bracket it'll jump to where my timeline indicator is so now I have this footage this comp which is our Witterson cutout on top of our main footage for two seconds and then we go back to our regular programming all right so we're gonna start building this up so, we're in our comp. <clears throat> we need to add a two node camera. I always find them easier to use for these simple um, setups. And we're going to make uh, our layers 3D. All right. So, first layer, new camera. And right up at the top here, one node or two node. I'm going to click Enable to Depth of Field off. For this sort of introduction, we can do a manual blurring for this kind of stuff. And we will click OK. And it'll say, are you sure you want to do this? Uh, blah, 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 blah. Yes, 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 fine. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, After Effects. Thank you for caring. OK, so now we need to make our layers 3D. If you can't see it, if you have the blend modes set up here, just go down to the bottom, toggle switches modes, and right around here, this little beautiful cube will tell you now that you have 3D assets, and we can start manipulating our stuff. So 
what we need to do is bring our foreground element closer in Z space, and then we're going to scale it down to match that original size. So this is the trick, okay? So the background for now can stay where it is. Foreground, hit uh, P on your keyboard. You'll see your X axes, Y axes, and Z. I'm going to bring that toward my camera, so click and drag it. It'll be nice and big. But what I want to do is hit scale also. So I've hit shift S to bring that up. So I only have these two open. And now I'm going to scale it down to try to match that original. Probably 66. Nope, not 6,000. 66. Nope. 66. Thank you. And I think if I get my zoom tool here, no, we're not on there at all. So it is 67 or more. If you want to do small increments, just click once to get it highlighted and use the up and down arrow keys. Very helpful. And you can see I more or less have it. If I zoom in here, you can see I'm a little off, so maybe I want to go to 68.5. And look at that, we're good. Fit. If you're ever zoomed in too much or zoomed out too much, just go over to this zoom and go uh, fit up to 100. And then you can resize your windows and it'll stay with you. All right. <clears throat> so now, if I move this camera around, hitting P on the keyboard, you'll start to notice that we have our parallax already. So undo that. And this is where we want to uh, just do our quick sort of animation, okay? So create subtle or slow motion movement by animating the camera and or the layers uh, to create that par parallax. And for a little bonus, we'll do a little bit of um, using the puppet tool, puppet pin tool to uh, give it a little more life while it's frozen. All right. So first things first, I know if I go back to my main comp <clears throat> that I want this frame, I'm going to zoom in here, I want this frame, these two frames to be exact, right? So I need, um, I need this frame when I'm in the cutter, Wooderson cutout. I need all of these to be back exactly where they are right now. So I'm just going to get hit P and R. So again, P, Shift R, P, Shift R to bring in position and rotation. Just click and I'm not going to worry about orientation. Just going to worry about my Z rotation. I'll talk about orientation another time or never. Don't worry about the orientation. The, so we have our first frames. I'm going to go back to my last frame and do the exact same thing. So I can literally just select all those. C, V, Control, C, or Command, C, Control, Command, V to get all those in there. Same thing with my the position of my camera. Click and hold, click that. What I'm going to show you now if I twirl this down is that a two node camera has a point of interest. So I'm also going to do that. I can just click and drag those, put them over there, and control command C, control command V to uh, put those back in the spot. So this is where I want to come forward a few frames and do some animation. So what I like to do is uh, just get rid of all the bits that I don't need. I, I like to have only the uh, animated properties open. So I'm going to select all those layers, hit U on the keyboard, and now it only it's only going to show me uh, what I have keyframes for. 
very uh, helpful when you have many, many layers and uh, not a big screen. So my first step is to uh, maybe bring my foreground layer a little bit closer. I'm going to move him there a bit. Uh, again, move that to the end, copy paste to uh, where we are right now. Uh, I'm going to do the same with the background, so I'll take it back in Z space. Uh, maybe give it a little bit of a, a rotation here and here, and maybe like that. Give it a, show it a little bit of Z space. And then again, slide those over. Wait for my computer to think about wanting to do what I want it to do. There we go. And then copy paste those same back here. So now I'm going to go uh, put this on half. I'm going to save this project. Hit zero on the keyboard. And you'll see we have a very basic zoom in and zoom out. Not much going on, right? Well, that's because we want to animate our camera. So I'm going to do the same um, with our camera. Maybe go on that same sort of spot. Um, going to move the position. And maybe I want to go even further so that we have this coming back here. We have our basic animation. We have our foreground coming toward us a little bit, background going away from us a little bit, and we have a little bit of animation, a little bit of parallax on our camera, and we have it all returning back to normal. So if I go back to my main comp here, I should be able to uh, zoom out a bit here, be on the keyboard to make my work area, because I don't want to be sitting here looking at frames I don't need to. And hit save. Now I can see I want it to fit. Aha. So one of the things I did not do using this method, I like to uh, keep all my elements separate and on their own compositions. It makes things nice and clean for me. I know where things are going to be. And I can also uh, do some time remapping on these comps if I need to. However, by doing this, I've left this main footage frozen uh, and still. So I need to uh, affect its opacity. So I'm going to zoom in here, click T on the keyboard, go 100% there, bring that down to uh, the end. A great way to get uh, to where you want to go next is to click. I know that I'm going to be going to the end of this layer. So I'm going to go here and hit O on the keyboard, and it'll take me right there. Come back to the layer I need to affect, make another keyframe, and bring us back to 100. Now, we should have what we're looking for. Not too bad. So what I want to do, actually, I don't want, obviously, this to be transparent. So what I'm going to do is just make a regular layer, layer, new, solid. And come down to the color. Make sure it's comp size. And if it's not, just click Make Comp Size. Choose a color that uh, could be fun. Maybe we'll go with a crazy blue or brown. Or sorry, uh, orange or brown. Fit in with our nature theme. And of course, it sits, shoots it on top. I don't want it on top. I'll bring it down to the bottom. The other thing you can do to give this a little more um, neat is you can see in this original file, right toward the end, is this beautiful long shot of this gorgeous giant tree with its beautiful textured bark. So what I've gone ahead and done 
is cut out that tree in um, in Photoshop. You can just click on it. Just a nice little uh, chunk of that tree. And I'm going to bring that tree in <clears throat> and make it 3D also. And what I'm going to do is move it way back in Z space. So how I'm going to do this, I'm actually going to go and introduce you to a new type of view. So I'm going to go to uh, one view instead, click it to two views. And now you can see we have two windows. You can see which one's active by the little blue bars on top of it. So I'm going to click in our new window and you can see down here at the bottom which window we have selected. So if I zoom out and go and select my camera, you can see where my camera is. If I cycle through here, you can see how it animates. And I have my tree. So it's sitting right dead center and I don't want that. So I just get my Z space, my, just shoot it back in Z space. If I want this to, um, uh, take over the entire space. Maybe I'll uh, rotate it in Z. And instead of scaling this up to like a million, a great little um, filter or uh, effect that uh, After Effects has is, and where do we go? We lost our, our effects and presets. Here we go. What we have. If you just type in the uh, search here, it's Repetile, so rep, uh, and you can see plugins, effects, blah, 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 CC Repetile. Just double click that with your tree selected. And then in our effect controls, you'll see how we can expand it uh, up, down, left, and right. And you can see in my window now, I'm just using an effect to multiply those edges and I can make it much, 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 much bigger and not worry about uh, overall file size being, uh, being affected. So now I can take this tree layer, come down to toggle switches modes, switch over to modes, and then instead of it being on normal, maybe we just take it down to darken or uh, maybe multiply, no, it's too much, uh, hard light. That should be good. Maybe soft light. Yeah, that's perfect. And then maybe we'll take our uh, opacity down just a little more, just to give it a little bit of texture in the background there. And you can see if I go over back over to my one view, and then instead of active camera, I'm actually going to go down to custom view. And this is where you'll get a good sense of uh, of what you're looking at. So I'll come up here to uh, my toolbar and click the unified camera tool and you can click and drag around and see exactly what you're looking at, where all those pieces of the puzzle are. I have my camera selected so you can see it too. You can also scrub in your timeline. So the reason we go down to custom view instead of actually going to active camera and using that camera tool is if I make this change now in my active camera, you'll see I'm making uh, a keyframe and that's not what we want to do. Okay. So we always go instead of active camera, go to custom view and uh, you can press C on your keyboard to cycle through your camera tools or just go up to the top there. All right, so we have a little bit of movement. And what I'm going to do is give this guy a little bit more animated elements. So this is where we're getting into using the puppet tool, distorting the character or objects or what have you with our puppet tool. So I have my foreground selected. I'm going to double click this guy because 
I'm actually going to go into the layer itself and right up at the top here, Puppet Pin Tool, click on this guy and start adding my pins. Um, I can give one to the uh, to the paddle. It's probably a good idea. You can see it's starting to think. And maybe just throw a few through here. So how this works is if you're going to animate something and you want the rest to stay still, you need to add sort of anchor pins and then you'll be animating the one pin. So if I click this now, you can see it's only moving there. Just undo that. And for his head too, I can take this and move it up and down. And it's using those other pins as an anchor. So now that I have my pins, I can actually go back to our main um, comp here. And I'm going to click, just make my window a little bigger. And you can see on my foreground layer, we ha now have a puppet effect and a mesh. And all those mesh have deform points all in there. So you could clean these down and open them all up. or just click on your foreground layer and hit U on the keyboard, and now you'll see every single one of those pins defaults to having a, uh, a, a keyframe. So that's perfect. So what we want to do is select all those keyframes, come back over, go back to the end here, and copy paste. So I'm going to put those at the end. And I'm going to have my movement come through here. So deselect all those, have the layer itself or the actual puppet um, effect selected. And this is where you can start giving it a bit of movement, just ever so slightly. You really don't want to overdo this because it will look fake. Very, 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 very subtle just to give it a bit of life. And now we get that sort of slow motion looking feeling. All right, so if I zoom in with the plus and minus keys, uh, you can see here, I actually have one frame where it's the same. And so we have our original and our camoed so I actually don't need this, um, this layer right here. I'm just going to pull that back a bit, move my uh, opacity over. And now when we zoom in, we'll cut right back to that original uh, file. So make sure you don't have a double um, a layer or a frame doubled up there. All right, save, and we're good. So we've distorted. Now we need to import that comp into the main footage, which is what we've done already. I just skipped that step because I couldn't wait. Uh, and we're good, so we're on to chapter four. So this is where we're going to animate titles, create a text layer, there's all kinds of uh, presets you can use to animate text in and out, uh, or you can do it yourself. Uh, and we'll make, we'll, we can add effects if you want, and uh, add some extra secondary textures or uh, speed lines, or make it uh, make it crazy in there. That's entirely up to you. But we do need a reason for this stoppage in our video, so we're just going to go here. And this is where you have a choice. So you can work within that cutout layer and make your text 3D if you want. It doesn't need to be 3D in here. Or you can work out back out in that main and have your text sitting on top. Um, it's entirely up to you. However, if you do end up, uh, I guess if you're going to 
time remap, you're probably going to pre-count this entire thing. So it really is up to you and where you want that text to be. I'm going to uh, put it right on top, just to keep things simple. So I'm going to go up to the top, my, get my text tool, and type my title, whatever that might be. And he deserves all caps. And an exclamation, of course. So I have that layer selected. Go over to my character panel. Pull it down if I can't see it. Change the text color to something nice and big and bright that I can actually see. And of course, this is entirely up to you what uh, colors you choose. But obviously, you want it to pop off the page. I have my caps lock on, so it's not going to work. Um, I had chosen, um, where did it go? Fedora. Love that Fedora font. And just so you know, Fedora is from shyfonts.com, where they have this gorgeous illustration. And you can learn and download and all that good fun stuff. So I'm using their font and that is available for download. So I have this text layer and what I want to do is make sure that uh, if I want this animating at all, I want my um, anchor point, I want basically uh, it to be animating from the middle. So an easy way to do that is to go and get your pan behind or anchor point tool and just click and drag that anchor point right to the middle and now say I hit my I got my rotation it'll rotate right around that middle point so this is where you could just very simply hit P on the keyboard get your position uh, here and make a new keyframe and go there and then off the top go back to your move tool click and drag it off the page and you can see it makes a, a new keyframe go to the end and zoom it off the page this way so you can see my keyframes are a little off maybe a little fast too instead of doing that kind of uh, animation let's show you one of the presets because they're fun so we can go uh, hit escape over here and we go effects and presets i'm going to pull this out so we can actually see it presets text there's also plugins all kinds all kinds of plugins all kinds of presets wonderful stuff to, uh, to play with. So animate in. This is where if you open these up in Adobe Bridge, you would be able to see all of these uh, and how they act, how they behave. So maybe in, uh, in by character, I want to go maybe with typewriter. So I have this layer selected. Just going to go and uh, either click and drag it on top of that one or double click if I had it selected and uh, I don't want that one actually I want my Wooderson so click and drag that and now you'll see if you hit U and I'm running out of uh, real estate here if you hit U you'll see that we now have that preset is basically just a uh, a set of actions, a set of keyframes, and so you can select how fast you want this to type on. So pretty good, doesn't really suit the speed, so I'm going to zoom that up, and I'm going to get my position, and for the end here, zoom it off to the left, and to the right, to his left. Am I right? 
and maybe just give it a little bit of animated uh, kick, a little bit of uh, anticipation. So I'm going to copy that one. And then this one, will I'll move it back just ever so slightly so that it zooms away. Okay, so we've created our text layer, we've animated it in and out. Now it's time for effects and some options to uh, get some secondary animated stuff in there, some textures, but I'll leave that to you guys uh, to have some fun with. So let's add some effects just to give this text a little more pop um, for the style of this uh, little show. So first what I want to do is go right up to Effect, Generate, and everybody always needs a lens flare. The great thing about putting a lens flare right on a text layer is that if you see me grab this little uh, flare center, it only shows up within the text, so we don't actually get that blinding, annoying, cheesy look. We just get a little bit of a hint that we can animate uh, left to right. So. That's what I'm going to do. Just animate my flare center. Hit U on the keyboard to get that up there. And then just drag it across. Go forward in time, drag it across. And we can see how that works. Not too bad. Just a little bit of a hint. And you can see actually it stays as my text layer animates, the actual lens flare stays where it is, so I'm going to want to animate that right off the page, which will increase my time, of course. But that's fine. That's okay. Hit save, and we'll keep going. So, I'll let you uh, figure out your secondary layered textures. Uh, that's entirely up to you. With this, I would probably add some paddles or maybe some um, camping-esque uh, graphics, but we'll keep this simple and we'll get to the end. All right, so what's next? Chapter 5, finalizing the image. So as far as effects, you mean the world is your oyster as far as effects here. Um, one thing I do want to do though is tone down the brightness on my background layer right here. So I'm going to go back into my cutout layer and uh, just affect the background as it pulls away just so that my foreground pops a little more. So I'm just going to go up to effect, color correction, and just stick to a, um, just do brightness contrast very simply. Add, uh, you can do both here. So as it shoots back, just going to bring that brightness down just a little more. Maybe increase the uh, contrast, why not? And then of course, I want that to go back to normal. So copy paste and then right click, keyframe assist, time reverse keyframes so that it comes back to normal. And that way, when I go back to my main, my text will pop even better than it did before. All right. Moving on, create a vignette. So what this will do is just bring even more attention to um, the foreground, to the middle, to my text layer. So as far as that's concerned, just go up to Layer, New, and Adjustment Layer. And I can start this right where it is. So Alter Option, um, left square bracket. And go up to the top and hold down where it says Rectangle Tool. Just go down to Ellipse Tool. And then just draw from, actually, with this Ellipse Tool, I can just double click and get a perfect framed ellipse for my screen. And that way I can go down to my mask and uh, feather this out. And then I can go again, probably even just to the brightness contrast. 
and uh, bring down that brightness contrast. Now, this is actually an inverse um, vignette, so that doesn't work. So instead of adjustment for that, I just, instead of add, I'll go subtract. And then we have a nice uh, vignette here. And of course, that's a little much, so I'll just increase take that up just a little better just so we have a little bit of a hint and what I'll do actually is um, animate this mask so that it's not just blasting on at 100% so that it actually animates just the same as the rest of our text and then of course do the same at the end copy paste and time reverse for that to come out. All right, so then I'll rename this guy. Oops, don't want to do that. I want to hit enter and say uh, vignette, vignetter. And what else do we want to do? Color correction. All right, so this is a big, huge, massive topic. If you're not familiar with color LUTs or lookup tables, um, that is definitely something you're going to want to get into as you make your films. Uh, for now, showing you um, what After Effects and, uh, of course, Premiere Pro will do the same. I'm going to go Layer, New, Adjustment Layer. I'm going to call this uh, Color Correction. And on it, I can go up to Effect, Utility, right down at the bottom. And this is where we have a few of our choices. So we can apply a color LUT here, and we can also do a Lumetri color, which I have a lot of fun with. So as far as applying a color LUT, if you have uh, Adobe Photoshop on your computer, right in the Adobe CC 2018 for me and then presets 3D LUTs this is where we have all kinds of choices and uh, it will just uh, I mean it'll do some pretty cool stuff so uh, let's go with uh, horror blue and you can see right away we get this really neat uh, look but the, the main thing here is that we want to, as far as LUTs are concerned, we want to um, match the kind of um, look that a specific camera has. Okay, and that's why you get these kinds of looks here. And you can also make your own LUTs, but I'll leave that to you. What I actually like to do is go up to Effect Utility and Lumetri color. And so here we have basic correction and here again you can input your own LUT and it will match all kinds of cameras that exist out there. You can bring in your own of course and you can also do very specific color correction and then you get into the creative aspect here and uh, again it looks like that kind of um, lookup tables that we had with uh, Photoshop, Gold Tobacco, I love these names they come up with. Uh, really neat, really uh, amazing stuff you can get into. And uh, of course, Blue Steel. Gotta go with the Blue Steel maybe, why not? Let's look at the Blue Steel here. Fantastic, love that. And the great thing is again, you can apply this throughout your color correction process. Uh, within Premiere Pro, you can do it in here very, very easily. And then, of course, maybe this is way too much, so I can just take the opacity down here on this guy. And then, if I have to do this to other um, files, of course, I can just remember I chose Blue Steel and uh, brought my opacity down to 50%. All right. And of course, I can apply this to the entire image if I want to, or just this moment where we zoom in and out. So again, uh, just do that same thing. Get the opacity. 
and bring that down here. And there we go. And as far as keeping your files clean, I like to make sure that uh, any layer that's on my, uh, that's in a comp, if it's not actually active, I like to clean it up. And just, so then I know right from, right when I open the file, I know where those uh, layers are and what they're, uh, what, what, what they're affecting basically. All right, hit save, and uh, and we're done. Render that out. Obviously, make sure to take your uh, work area. And um, as far as uh, rendering out, if you want to keep a good, a great copy that uh, is worth or is um, not going to be compressed at all. If we just go down to uh, Add to Render Queue and click on the word Lossless and we'll go up to Format, this is where we'll get um, the options of how you're going to be uh, rendering this out. And so what I like to do is render out a TIFF sequence. You can also do a PNG as a low, uh, lower file size. But a TIFF sequence, especially if you're on a, um, a network, Rendering out individual images is always a better idea. And then you'll see down here, it'll give you um, square brackets and the numbers dot tiff. And that way, uh, you'll have specific images, uh, one through uh, what it'll, whatever it'll be, uh, 200 or 300. And then you can take those rendered images and make uh, MP4s or uh, whatever kind of online uh, codec you want to use um, for the internets. All right, and there you have it. Thanks for joining me. That's your Parallax title sequence. What are some?